out <clears throat> on the family and friends and it sort of reminds me when Jesus' friend Lazarus got sick and he passed away and Jesus came to the town of Bethany. He knew what he was going to do. And Martha was so upset. But as they went to the tomb, it was said, I want you to look at how much they loved him. How much Lazarus was loved. And Martha said, Lord, if you'd have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. He said, well, he'll live again. She said, I know he'll live again in the resurrection. He looked at her and he said, Martha, I am the resurrection. Even though a man die, yet shall he live. Family, I am honored to stand here for just a few minutes uh, and speak on behalf of Debbie Down. I was not ever privileged to meet Debbie personally. And I think that was my loss. I think that, that, that I missed out because of all the things that I have heard have been about someone that I was really, really hated. Uh, I, uh, I know uh, a lot of people in here today, a lot of people in here know me, and whatever they say about me, it ain't true. <laughs> I assure you. Now, my old person, that it was true, but uh, whatever they tell you, you know, might be uh, up and late. But uh, I know a lot of, lot of the family. Matter of fact, Larry Dodd, my friend, asked me, he said, how did you get to fit in here? I said, I've been trying to get an invitation to the Dodd and Carswell Scott reunion for 20 years, and this is about as close as I could come. So, uh, but uh, I just want to tell you that, uh, hey, Debbie, she was loved. It is so obvious. And uh, she's one of those that I, I just imagine, just like the family that I know, uh, a lot of fun. Was Debbie a lot of fun? Hey, I've already heard that. Yeah. I've heard she's a lot of fun. I heard she could light up a room. And uh, I have seen some pictures. And uh, I can tell you that uh, I can feel the pain that you're feeling today. But I'm going to tell you that there is one person that can ease your pain through the days of sorrow, and that's Jesus. And uh, so we'll pray, be another song, then we'll go speak a little more. Lord, thank you for being amongst us today. Lord, thank you for that life that Debbie lived. Lord, all those memories that, that this, these family and friends, these, these cousins, that they have of her. Lord, how they loved her. And Lord, today, how they miss her. Lord, only you can comfort that kind of pain. And Lord, so we ask you to do that. And we ask you in the strong name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by his side.
Every time I hear that, I, I try to imagine. Imagine I might say, Jesus, I made it. I don't know if I will or not. There's a lot of things I imagine, but his word tells me that it had that eye has not seen, nor has ear heard, nor has it even entered into the heart of man the things that he has prepared for those who love him. So I guess really we can't even imagine. We can imagine and liken things here, but it's so much better. We all have to go through stuff. And in life, this is one of the things that we have to go through. Solomon, who we're told was the wisest man uh, ever because God gave him all the wisdom, well, Solomon looked at life and in one place he said this, he said, to everything there's a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time of hate. A time of war and a time of peace. And family, <clears throat> friends, as Solomon said, there was a time to be born. But the other side of that coin, there was a time to die. And unless we're here, when Jesus comes back, we're all going to die. As I get older, uh, I don't dwell, but I think about it a little bit. And there are times that I tell my wife, I say, one day, one of us has to be by ourselves. One day, we, one of us has to be by ourselves. It's inevitable. But that's not the end. There's a time for everything. A time to cry and a time to laugh. Today, there's many tears shed. But as the days go by and those good, good memories flood your heart, the Lord will begin to do a work. Forget? No. No, you'll never forget. You would never want to forget. That's what love is. I heard something a long time ago when a classmate of mine died about memories. And there was a little thing that said this, memories are a golden bridge that keeps our hearts in touch with all those long past yesterdays and the one we loved so much. I love to be around where people are talking about memories. Even if I don't know, they'll be talking about, do you remember that time that Debbie said this? Do you remember that time that Debbie did? Oh, 
You know that time? <laughs> Let's go get it. But I remember that. I come up to be parts of those memories. And in time, you will too. Um, I'm told, I've said that I didn't know Debbie personally, but uh, when Doug called me and asked me if I would uh, be honored to, uh, to speak, and then I read the account, I read the account that said this, she loved her family and she loved the Lord. Hey, you know what? A lot of us that have had good times, a lot of us that have had times we don't want to talk about, hey, isn't it so wonderful that God, the Lord, when Debbie asked Jesus to be her Lord and Savior, she immediately became a possessor of a lot of God's promises. Like what? Like, I will never leave you or forsake you. Now I know when uh, family has told me that uh, Debbie went through a lot uh, the last few years, few months. Uh, she went through a lot. But God was always there. God was always there. And one of the precious things that uh, I, uh, I asked my friend David, uh, a good friend of David Carson, that I said, I, I don't think I ever met Debbie personally. He said, I'll send you a picture of Debbie at our last reunion. And uh, he did. And uh, she was sitting there, and she was sitting next to Dennis. And uh, she had on a shirt. And I magnified it so I could look at that shirt. You know what that shirt said? His grace is enough. Amen. Now, brother, that's it. His grace is enough to make a sinner clean. Enough to make a, a sinner a saint. Uh, hey, I am a born-again Christian, but you know what? I still sin. All of us Christians that live in the, the world, we, we still sin. But I like what John Phillips said. John Phillips said, for the Holy Spirit came that, that the second I was saved and sealed me he played a place in my heart where I can't sin. There's a place that I won't sin. And that's that place that Jesus. And also, that promise she received was to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. The very moment, faster than we can imagine, when she closed her eyes in what we call death, she was with the Lord. She was with the Lord. I like to uh, say this, that for those that have put their faith in Christ, when they die, they immediately look at the face of Jesus. You immediately look at the face of Jesus. And also, those promises of heaven. Do you ever just think? Do you ever just think about heaven? Like the scripture said, eyes not seen, ears not heard, neither is it entered into the heart of man the things that he has prepared. Don't miss this last little bit. For those who love him. He pre he's prepared them for everyone. 
But everyone has to come to the place that Debbie came to. And she has to ask for Jesus to be her Lord and Savior. Jesus knew that he was going away and he had tried to prepare his disciples and he had made them promises. But when it was time, they just couldn't grasp that he would not be with them anymore. So he said to them, he said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And I will receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. But Thomas, one of the twelve, now the eleven, said, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Don't miss it. No man comes to the Father but by me. You just are not going to help me without the redeeming shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You want to hear some more of my imagines? I imagine that when a Christian sees Jesus, it's just so overwhelming. So overwhelming. And Jesus is there holding, hugging, and he may say, Debbie, you're okay now. Debbie may say, Lord, this is so much better than I ever thought it would be. But Lord, I want my family. I, even though I'm in heaven, I want my family. She said, she might say, send somebody to tell my family how to get here. Jesus might say, okay, I'm going to send Roger White and let him talk for a few minutes. I'm going to send some songs that are going to glorify me. I'm going to send some preachers. But Debbie, it's up to them. It's all up to them. And but Jesus said, if I go and prepare a place for you, I'm going to come again. That's a promise. And Jesus is going to come again to receive. And those that have received him must do so prior to this. Prior to this. And after a while in heaven, you know, if we could, uh, if we could ask Debbie or those in heaven, we miss you so bad. Perhaps they'd say, I miss you too, but I don't want to come back. I don't want to come. You come up here where I am. Uh, don't miss this for the world. Did you hear what I said? For the world. Don't miss it for the world. And one day, Jesus is going to come back. And all the things that are wrong in this world, is going to be going to be made right. It's going to be made right, and then his people are going to live with him forever and 
You can't imagine that. Eternity. Living. Jesus let the same John who wrote Jesus' words, let not your heart be troubled. He wasn't saying, be flippant. No, he was saying, have faith. You have the faith. It's going to happen. But Jesus let John have a glimpse, a glimpse into heaven, in the revelation. All the, all humanity was gathered because you see, we're all created by God. And there is the judgment. And not everyone will enter into that eternal state of heaven. Those that rejected Christ here will not be there. But Jesus pulled the curtain back and he let John see a little bit. And John said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy sea, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. I love this. Prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. John looked into heaven and he saw that all the, the, the heartaches and bad things were passed away. But there were tears in heaven. Tears in heaven? Why would there be tears in heaven? Well, let me tell you, my, you know, perhaps that there are Christians in heaven who are looking for their family. And they're looking for their friends. And they're looking for the people they worked with. They're looking for the people they loved. God is saying, what's wrong? Lord, I'm looking for my children. I'm looking for my, I'm looking for my brother. I'm looking for my grandchildren. Lord, where are they? And God will just simply have to wipe away those tears. Wipe away those remembrances. Because some did not choose to go there. I'll assure you that every Christian in heaven wants their family to be with them. And family and friends, I hope that you can say today, hey, if I were to die today, I'd be absent from the body, but I would be present with the Lord. If you were to die today, would you see uh, Debbie and those that have professed their faith and talk about a reunion Larry, you think you pack them in down there uh, with, 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 when you have y'all's reunion? Whoa, well, that's going to be a reunion. That is going to be a reunion. I like reunions. I like reunions because of the love and the fun and the fellowship. Not to mention the food. Uh, hey, they, they talk about the marriage supper of the Lamb. I'm going to child that. I'm going to child that. You know, because we're going to be with Jesus. So, my closing is this here. This is not the end. This is just the beginning.
The Apostle Paul, who was miraculously saved, ministered in a big city of Corinth. And people came to know Christ by the, the, by, by the droves. But after a while, their people were dying and they were wondering to Paul, Paul, you said that Jesus was coming back, but now our loved ones are dying. Paul said, I'm going to tell you of a mystery. I'm going to tell you how it is we'll take this body and we'll sow it into the ground like you would sow a seed of corn. Now, when you put that body into the ground, like, like the seed, it's there. But it's not dead. It's going to come forth a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful body. Hey, the next time you see a uh, child of God who suffered with cancer and dementia and, and all this, hey, you won't be seeing any cancer. You won't be seeing any amputations. You won't be seeing any dementia. You'll be seeing a glorified body like his glorified body. Hey, I'm looking forward to that. Because I'm going to tell you, these years kind of, they, they, they kind of withered these bodies away. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I, I do think about, like I told you sometimes, but I came across something today and it, it kind of spoke to my heart and I want to leave you with this. The fear of death is far greater than death itself. The fear of death is greater than death itself, but the fear of the unknown is the greatest fear of all. You know, Jesus really used John to assure the people. John said, I've written these things to you that you may know that you have eternal life. You know what? I don't think I'm going to heaven. I know I'm going to heaven. If Jesus is in heaven, I'm going to heaven. Because, hey, as a sinner, I accepted his sacrifice and his forgiveness. And I hope that you will too. So, um, Lord, I know I probably haven't done too good, but I've done the best I can do. Lord, I pray that you will uh, be with this uh, family, these friends. Lord, comfort their hearts in days to come. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
thing Paul told the Corinthians? He said that the power of sin is in the law. We all live under law. We live under grace. He said, Oh, grave, where is your victory? Satan was defeated at the cross. Family, thank you for letting me stand here for a few minutes. And the last thing that I would say to you is, as a family and friends, be close. Be close. Don't let anything come between you that just because one is missing. Stay together. Love one another. Draw strength from one another. And Lord, when you, when you need strength, call them. Call them. Hey, look at all these friends. Look at all these cousins. Look at all these people. Hey. <coughs> so thank you. Lord, you are our you are our strong refuge in times like this. You're our stronghold. Lord, give us the grace to determine that, Lord, we will draw near to you as you draw near to us. Lord, we love you. We understand that our love pales in comparison to yours. But we love you. And we thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name.